In this video, we're going to start by creating a new SvelteKit project, and we'll explore the SvelteKit demo app. We'll take a deep dive into the code base and get a really good understanding for what's going on. All right, now let's get our demo app created and running. This will be straightforward, especially if you already have Node installed on your computer and you've used NPM before. If you don't have Node installed, you'll need to do that first and ensure you have the most recent version. If you're not sure what version of Node you have, you can check by running the command node-v in your terminal. If you need to update Node or you don't have it installed at all, you can do that at nodejs.org. Here, all you have to do is click the button that says current and then install that onto your computer. Now that we have Node set up, we can initiate a new SvelteKit demo project by running the command npm init svelte and then the name of our app in our terminal. So in this case, I've just named the app beginner SvelteKit course. We see after running this command, we're prompted to answer a few questions in our terminal. We're asked which template we'd like to start from. For this example, I want you to select SvelteKit demo app. This will create a new SvelteKit project with a counter, to-do list, and routing for us to look through and learn from. In the future, you can start from a blank project by selecting the second option, Skeleton Project. But for learning purposes, we're going to start with the demo app. We will then be prompted to answer a few more questions, and your responses here don't really matter, so you can set up your project however you prefer. But I'm going to say no to TypeScript and yes to ESLint and Prettier, which is a code formatter. And then I'm also going to say no, I don't want to add any sort of testing for this demo project. Now our demo project has been created and the terminal gives us our next steps. So first we need to move into our projects directory using the CD command. And then we need to install any dependencies by running npm install. The next recommended step that our terminal gives us is to commit the project to GitHub. However, we're going to skip over this step since we're just using a demo project for learning purposes. I'll go over how to commit your work to GitHub later in the course when we go over adapters and deploying to Vercel. Finally, we can run the demo locally and open it in a new tab with the command npm run dev dash dash open. Here we see it open our browser window with the demo app running locally. If we click around the app a bit, we see we have our welcome page with a counter component. Notice this component has a nice animation. We'll go over animations with SvelteKit in a later video. At the top of our app, we have a nav bar. If we click about and to do's, we can see our route is changing. This is possible because SvelteKit comes with a built-in file-based router, so there's no need to install a routing package. We will again cover this in detail in a future video. Now let's open our code in our text editor. I'm using VS Code, but any text editor works fine. And we'll notice that we have a few folders. First, we have our node modules, which is normal if you're working with a node application. This folder includes all the dependencies that are installed via your package.json file. Now, while we're in this file, let's take a look at our dependencies. We see a few here, but really the only one we truly need is Svelte and SvelteKit. All the other dependencies are optional. For example, we have this adapter auto, which we actually will end up using later, but it's not necessarily required. I'll go over what this is later in the course when we cover adapters and deploying our app. We also see ESLint and Prettier, which formats and lints our code, but are optional, as well as cookies, which is really only needed for this demo project because we're using cookies, but it's not tied into SvelteKit. Finally, we see this Fira Mono, which is a font that is used in the demo project, but again, not required. So the only dependencies we really need are Svelte, which is the library itself, and SvelteJS slash kit, which right now is version next. This typically means we're in the beta version, which as of the time of this filming, we are. Now let's skip down to the very bottom here where we have the svelte.config.js file. This is just a configuration file for SvelteKit. We will work out of this file a bit in the future when adding SCSS and working with adapters. Now let's dive into our folders. First, we have our static folder. This folder is the home of our static assets, so anything like images or music, icons, etc. Next, we have our source or SRC folder. This is where we will mostly be working out of. Within this folder, you see we have our lib folder, routes folder, app.css, app.html, and our hooks.js. Let's dive a little deeper into these. First, we have this hooks.js file, which is not something we need to be too concerned with right now. It is just a JavaScript file containing a single method for parsing cookies and looking for a user ID, which may seem a bit confusing right now, and that's okay. 
it doesn't really involve Svelte and it's just some logic to make the demo work correctly. So this file isn't present in a skeleton project. So we don't really need to worry too much about what's going on here. We also have app.html in our SRC folder, and this is the main entry point for the application. Notice we have some template replacement tags. Here we have this sveltekit.head, which takes our metadata and inserts it here. We also have svelte.body, which is basically a div that Svelte will insert our entire application into. Now moving into our app.css file, this is just a basic CSS file loading our default styling. But notice if we take a peek back at app.html, our CSS file is not being loaded here. So where is it? Well, let's open our routes folder and move into our layout.svelte file. First off, you may notice this file has an interesting name. The two underscores before the file name indicate a non-route file within the routes folder. Every file within the routes folder corresponds to a route unless it's prefixed with these underscores. Within our layout file, notice that we're importing our app.css. This layout will be applied to the entire app, making it an appropriate place to import our default CSS. The most important thing to point out in this file is our slot tag. Slot is where everything is inserted into, such as any of our page routes. So the only requirement of a layout is that it contains a slot tag. We'll take a deep dive into layouts and slots in future videos. Next, we'll take a look at index.svelte. Now, this is an example of a page, so the layout we just looked at will be applied here. And this is actually our root page. So if we look in our browser, we see it lives at our root URL. We also see the header, which is part of our layout, as well as all the content within our index.svelte page. Looking at the code, we see our counter component is imported, as we'd expect, and we also have this svelte head tag, which allows us to insert metadata. Now moving up, we also have an about.svelte page within our routes folder. Anytime a file exists within the routes folder, a route is automatically generated for the page. If we go back to the browser and go to slash about, we see the about page is being displayed. If we go to slash to do's, we once again see a new page. But this is a little bit different because slash to do's displays our index.svelte file within the to do folder under routes. This is because Svelte uses file based routing. We'll talk more about routes in future videos, so keep that in the back of your mind for now. Within our to do's folder, we see a lot of other interesting files like index.js. This is a server side route or an endpoint, which again we'll cover in a future video. So our routes folder is home to all of our pages, but what about components that are not pages? We keep these in our lib folder. If we open up the lib folder, we will see everything in our application that's not a page lives here. For example, we have a JavaScript file for form validation, and we also have reusable components written in .svelte files, which are a superset of HTML files. Notice that our .svelte files have a script tag, style tag, as well as HTML. Now the styles written within .svelte files are scoped to that specific file. For example, down here in the style tag, we see we're styling our header. In this case, it is talking about this header up here in this specific file. We can use header anywhere else in the app and it will not generate these styles. Scoping CSS offers a lot of benefits, which we'll cover in the CSS video. So that was the demo project, and I really recommend starting with the demo project in order to get a feel for how Spellkit works and how the project is structured. Once you start building a project, it makes more sense to start from a blank project. So let's quickly go over how to start from a new blank skeleton project. We do this the exact same way we created the demo project, but instead of selecting Spellkit demo app for the first question, we'll instead select skeleton project. Again, all the other questions can be answered to your liking, and it's the same steps to install and get this running locally. Now that we understand our project structure and have a basic idea of what's going on in our code base, let's learn the Svelte fundamentals. In the next video, we'll start by learning about Svelte's reactivity. I'll see you there.